Okay, so now we look at the digestion that happens inside the ruminant animal, specifically in this case, the cow. So the first thing that happens is ingestion. So this is when food literally has to enter the mouth, the cow bites off a piece of grass, and then inside the mouth it gets chewed. So there's something that's very interesting about cows is they only have teeth on their lower jaw, as this picture shows us here. And it's also confirmed when we look at the skeleton of a cow, the, the skull of a cow. And on the top, the, the top jaw, they actually don't have teeth. They have something called a dental cushion. So it's kind of like the gums that just has been thickened. Same thing when we look at the skull, there is no teeth there. So it's just this hard, horny bit that actually helps um, to, they grind the food basically uh, with the bottom teeth against the top cushion. So secondly, when food gets chewed, second um, bullet, uh, it also gets swallowed and mixed with saliva and when, uh, well, it first mixed with saliva and uh, with the food getting, getting chewed and everything and then it's called a bolus. As soon as they swallow the food, it's known as a bolus. So bolus should make you think of a ball. So the food literally takes the shape of a ball when it gets swallowed and goes down the esophagus. But a bolus specifically is food that has been chewed, mixed with saliva and then swallowed and goes down the esophagus. In the next bullet, they talk about that the saliva of a cow has no digestive juices, and the one they mention here is amylase. So amylase, um, I'm going to say if you can remember from life sciences, is the one that actually digests carbohydrates. So for a cow, they do not have amylase or this digestive juice in the saliva, so it can't help with digestion like in humans. The last bullet, when swallowed, the bolus, like I mentioned, moves down the esophagus and eventually it goes to the rumen. So the next phase that happens is called rumination. So what happens here, as we mentioned in the previous lesson, food is sort of the blue arrow goes down the esophagus. Here comes the bolus. Bolus enters the rumen and then from the rumen it goes to the reticulum and eventually will go back out. So rumination specifically, the food moves from the rumen back into the mouth and that movement of the food is called regurgitation. So when food gets regurgitated, it moves from the rumen back up into the mouth. So that's rumination. As soon as this new, ugh, my arrow doesn't want to work, as soon as the food is here inside the mouth for a second time, it gets chewed and that is known as a rumination. So the food that goes from the rumen into the mouth is actually called the cud. So the cud is basically the chewed food that has already started to digest. It was in the rumen. Bacteria have started to work on it. Then it goes back into the mouth and rechewed. So that bit is known as rumination. Regurgitation, the movement. Rumination, it gets rechewed on the inside of the mouth. So why does this happen? The function of it, the last bullet, this helps to enlarge the surface area of the food, again, for better digestion as soon as it hits the abomasum and the small intestine later on. Okay, so then the third thing that happens is the digestion specifically in the rumen itself. Before I go on with the points, I just want to mention that here's some interesting facts. The rumen, since we said it was the largest compartment um, of the cow, they talk about here 40 gallons, it can, that's the amount of moisture it can hold. Not 100% sure what that is in liters, but I can probably um, assume it's going to be a lot of liters because it's a large compartment. But what's very interesting is, again, that one small area of the stomach can hold about 100 billion bacteria, uh, 10 million protozoa, they say, and 10,000 fungi. Whether it's accurate, I don't know. But the point being that there are a lot of microorganisms inside the cow's rumen, specifically. So why are they there? The bacteria and the protozoa inside the rumen, they can break down cellulose, so specifically that carbohydrates. So all the cellulose that was inside the plant, plant material, we find cellulose inside the cell walls of the plant cells of all these different plants. Without this, these bacteria and the protozoa, and I think some fungi also specifically helps with this, but without the microorganisms, the, the, the cow actually can't eat grass. It can't digest the grass and get all its nutrients from the grass um, and actually survive. So the microorganisms help break down the cellulose. So the second point, bacteria secrete cellulase, and cellulase, if it ends with an A-S-E, the, the word, it refers to an enzyme. So cellulase is the enzyme that digests cellulose, and when it digests it, it turns into fatty acids. And we said previously somewhere in the previous um, lesson 
that fatty acids get absorbed in the rumen already. And then with, along with the fatty acids, the gases are also released, carbon dioxide specifically, and methane. So again, bacteria play a vital role inside the rumen for these cows. The third bullet, they talk about gases are released. So the carbon dioxide and the methane gets released out of the cow's body when they belch. And a better word or a scientific word for belching is eructation. So when in a test or something you see the word eructation, it refers to all those gases leaving the cow's body through its mouth. Um, and it will not be called eructation if the gases leave through the intestines and out of the anus. So, yeah. We all know it's something else, but eructation is when it leaves the mouth. Then the last bullet, so bacteria can also create protein from NPNs. Later on, we're going to look at NPNs in detail, but it stands for non-protein nitrogen. So basically, nitrogen that the cow gets from other sources, the uh, bacteria can actually turn into proteins. Because as we said, uh, the cows, they don't eat protein, they don't eat meat. All they eat is grass. So with the help of the bacteria, they turn the nitrogen they get from the plant material into actual protein, and that's how the cow actually builds muscle. The third thing, technically, that the, plant, uh, that the bacteria do, we said they break down cellulose, they can create protein, and the third thing is they can create vitamins for the cow as well, specifically vitamins K and B. Then I just quickly want to do this side, microbe requirements. So in the textbook, they actually give us a lot of different things or different requirements for um, to keep the microorganisms alive in the cow. But here I just um, zeroed in on four of them, four very important ones. The first thing is that the microorganisms, they require an anaerobic environment. And this means there should be no oxygen on the inside of the rumen. Otherwise, with oxygen, they will die. Then secondly, there should be a presence of food inside the rumen. That's kind of obvious, meaning the cow must be eating to be healthy. So then if there is food in the room and the bacteria can actually digest it and they also have food to survive. Then thirdly, the rumen must be slightly acidic. So pH around 6.5. Uh, seven is neutral. Anything below seven will be uh, acidic, but again, not too acidic. Like humans, we've got pH three. Our stomachs is very, very acidic. So then the bacteria will also not survive. And that's actually why our stomachs are also so acidic is because we don't really want the bacteria in our stomachs, but the cows want it. So that's why it's around 6.5. And lastly, they require a specific temperature around 38 to 42. And this is actually higher than our body temp temperatures. We have, we are at the body temperature of 37 degrees. So the cows have a slightly higher body temperature. So if they were to be ill, they can either have a temperature lower than 38 or higher than 42, and that is bad for the microorganisms. And fourthly, what happens then after the good digestion in the rumen, and hopefully the rest of the compartments, absorption happens. So the villi and the microvilli on the villi, they absorb nutrients to the bloodstream, like we mentioned, but specifically through osmosis and diffusion. Okay, quickly recap, diffusion is where nutrients, specifically just nutrients, go from the intestine into the bloodstream. But osmosis is the movement of water. Again, think O for H2O. So osmosis is the movement of water from the intestine into the bloodstream. Then, like we did in the previous lesson, there are goblet cells and crypts of Lieberkin uh, inside the small intestine. Goblet cells, they secrete mucus. Crypts of Lieberkin, they secrete digestive juices. Then just an interesting fact um, that also is important, though, is that you must know the difference between a calf and an adult cow. So the first thing, you don't have to remember all the years, meaning how old is a cow based on the teeth, but you guys have to know that as the cow ages, as many other animals like horses, I think we do the same thing with, and probably camels, I think, and yeah, some other animals, we age them based on their teeth, the amount of teeth they've got. So all animals usually start out with gums, but at a stage they have teeth. In this case, a cow again only has teeth on the lower jaw. So if they only have milk teeth, baby teeth, they're about under two years old, but this is kind of irrelevant just for interest sake. Then we usually talk about a two tooth. This means it's the uh, permanent teeth coming out. So then they're a bit older. As soon as they've got four permanent teeth, they're older again, around two and three years old. Then we've got, if they've got a full mouth of permanent teeth, they're about four years old or older. 
Then as the cow keeps on eating and grinding the food against their palate on the top um, jaw, they kind of get war worn and torn the whole time. So you can see the teeth are kind of skew and so on. So that's how we can actually determine this, that this cow is very, very old, maybe eight years old and so on. So the thing I want you guys to take away from this picture is just that we age cows according to their teeth. And this could be maybe a short or a multiple choice question in the exams at the end of the year. So they don't ask you a lot about it. You don't have to know how old the cow is. They won't show you a picture and ask you to say the age of the cow. No, they just want to test whether you know how we determine the age of cattle. So we do it based on the amount of permanent teeth they have on the lower jaw. Then this is quite important. Not all, sorry if it's out of focus, but Basically, I just want to show that if you compare the stomach compartments of a calf, it means pre-ruminant, they're not ruminants yet, uh, of a calf with that of an adult cow, it is very smaller. The calf has a very smaller stomach than, say, uh, an adult cow. And also, what is important here is look at the rumen. It's only 25% of the entire stomach. So it's a very small compartment. Whereas the abomasum, is the largest compartment at about 60%. Don't worry about the percentages, it's just to indicate the size. But point being, you can see physically the abomasum is the larger compartment, which is weird because we just did in the previous slides and so on that the rumen is supposed to be the largest one. So you can see an adult one, by the time they become an adult, the rumen is definitely the largest compartment. Then the abomasum decreases in size dramatically, going from 60% to 7%. Okay. So the main thing to take from this away is why does this happen? The things the cow eats is what determines what the size of the different compartments is. A pre-ruminant calf or a young calf at birth only drinks milk. It doesn't have teeth, it can't eat grass. So what happens? The milk goes down the esophagus, bypasses these three compartments and just goes straight into the abomasum for digestion by the digestive juices. Why? Because milk is made out of protein. So this compartment has to do a lot of work. But the older the cow gets, the more grass he eats, the more roughage he eats, and now bacteria is going to be needed to help with digestion. So the more grains they eat, the more roughage they eat, the more developed the rumen will become. So now the rumen becomes the largest compartment and the abomasum actually goes into the background. So it isn't as needed as much because now the bacteria is doing all the job for the cow. So this is why. Again, that's what I want you to take away from this slide. This one is very fascinating. Uh, so basically what they show here is they've actually dissected the stomach areas or specifically the rumen of different cattle. So at a calf age, they looked at the inside of the rumen. You can see it looks very, very smooth. No papilla, nothing. So it's very, very smooth. Why? Because only milk is taken in at this point for the calf and no digestion is needed in the rumen. Almost zero. Then they took an example of another cow. This cow was fed milk and hay. So you can see there's some papilla forming, but not really. Some of the um, areas are still kind of smooth. Why? Because the milk again gets bypassed here, goes to the abomasum, and the hay is not as rough as you think. So it does stimulate a little bit of growth in the rumen, but not a lot. What this experiment found is that if the animal eats or drinks milk and eats grain, which is a bit more rough, look at what the inside of the rumen looks like. It's very, very tough and rough, and a lot of um, papilla has been forming to help with the digestion of the food, the grain specifically. So we can assume that this last picture, this cattle or cow, had a lot of bacteria also on the inside of its rumen here. Okay, so this just goes to show you that based on what the animal eats, it's going to determine what the stomach lining looks like or the stomach looks like and also how large the rumen and so on is. Okay, that was basically it, I think, and then I did not have time for homework.